गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन वी आर बैक विद अनादर केस ऑफ गायनाकोलॉजी दिस इज अ केस स्टडी ऑन ओवेरियन फेलियर आर पेशेंट इज अ थर्टी सेवन ईयर ओल्ड फीमेल हुड कंप्लेन ऑफ इनफर्टिलिटी हर मैंस्ट्रुएशन हिस्ट्री हर लास्ट पीरियड स्टार्टेड फोर्टी फाइव डेज अगो हर पीरियड्स आर समटाइम्स रेगुलर बट एट अदर टाइम्स शी हैड मिस्ड अ पीरियड फॉर अप टू थ्री मंथ्स The bleeding is moderate and lasts up to four days. Patient has a daughter of thirteen years and a miscarriage two years later. Um, she has separated from her former husband and has now married again. And she is keen to have another kid, but she has complaints of infertility, and she has no history of pelvic pain or dyspareunia and no irregular bleeding or discharge. Her pregnancy status is gravida three and para one. gravida also known as gravidity it is the total number of confirmed pregnancies that a female has had regardless of the outcome and para which is also known as parity is the number of live births that a female has had after 20 weeks of gestation so since this patient has a daughter her para is 1 and she had two miscarriages it is gravida 3 social history alcohol intake is minimal and she does not smoke or take other drugs um in cases of infertility alcohol intake and smoking may have an adverse effect on ovulation in case of females and in males reduced sperm motility and sperm count is noticed in uh, if alcohol intake is high or the person is chronic smoker medical and medication history there is no medical history of note and she takes no regular medication this is important to know because maybe the patient has hyperprolactinemia due to some drug that she takes and in cases of hyperprolactinemia infertility is observed uh, a brief about her partner her partner is 34 years old and is also fit and healthy with no significant history of ill health or medications objective data there are no abnormal features on examination of either partner and lab parameters were performed during the next menstrual cycle of the patient her day 3 follicle stimulating hormone is slightly high her day 3 luteinizing hormone is normal prolactin is normal and testosterone is also normal but her day 21 progesterone is less than 13 nanomole per liter which confirms that an ovulation is seen in the patient so if a patient uh, has ovulated the day 21 progesterone should be higher than 30 nanomole per liter so we can confirm that the patient is suffering from an ovulation and that could be the cause of her infertility specialized diagnostic tests performed uh, semen analysis report of a partner was performed and normal volume count and normal forms and motility of the sperm was found so her partner does not have any abnormalities in his sperms or there is no male etiology in this case his serosalpingogram report was performed the uterine cavity is of normal shape with a smooth regular outline contrast medium is seen to fill both uterine tubes symmetrically and free spill of dye is confirmed bilaterally so this test is performed to notice any morphological abnormalities in the female and uh, the serosalpingogram report was normal so there is no obstruction uh, noticed in the fallopian tubes a transvaginal ultrasound scan report was performed the uterus is antiverted with no congenital abnormalities uterine fibroids or polyps visualized both ovaries are of normal morphology volume and mobility no follicles are noted so firstly antiverted uterus it is a term to describe the position of the uterus within a person's pelvis so when a person has an antiverted uterus it tilts forwards towards the abdomen and it does not cause any health concerns it is normal and the main thing here is that no follicles were noted in the transvaginal ultrasound scan report so this is the indication or it is the cause as to why the patient was suffering from infertility assessment Uh, the diagnosis on the basis of subjective data objective data lab parameters and specialized diagnostic tests the final diagnosis was made to be premature failure of ovarian function 
Women with irregular periods often do not ovulate. An ovulation in this case is confirmed by the low day 21 progesterone level. The commonest cause of anovulation is polycystic ovaries, but in this case, the ovaries show normal morphology and the androgen levels are normal. If this patient was suffering from polycystic ovarian syndrome, androgen levels would be high and the ovarians would be uh, having cysts and we could be able to see in the transvaginal ultrasound scan, but the patient had a normal ovarian morphology, so a poly polycystic ovarian syndrome is not likely to be the cause of her infertility. The noticeable abnormality is the high follicle stimulating level and the fact that no follicles are visualized at ultrasound scan. This is suggestive of anovulation from premature failure of ovarian function. The woman is not menopausal because she still has periods, although irregular, and the FSH is only marginally raised. However, it is known that FSH levels above 10 international units per liter are associated with a poor prognosis for conception using the women's own ova. So for a female to conceive naturally uh, using her own ova, uh, her follicle stimulating levels should be, hormone levels should be below the range of 10. But uh, this patient particularly has 11.1 IU per liter, which is above than 10. So it is a poor prognosis for conception. Um, about this condition, primary ovarian insufficiency occurs when the ovaries stop functioning as they should before age 40. When this happens, the ovaries don't produce the typical amounts of the estrogen hormone or release eggs regularly. This condition is also called premature ovarian failure and often leads to infertility. Primary ovarian insufficiency is sometimes confused with premature menopause, but these conditions aren't the same. Women with primary ovarian insufficiency can have irregular or occasional periods for years and might even get pregnant. But women with premature menopause stop having periods and can't become pregnant. Signs and symptoms of primary ovarian insufficiency are similar to those of menopause or estrogen deficiency. So these symptoms would be hot flashes, night sweats, and uh, vaginal dryness. All these signs and symptoms are observed in both primary ovarian insufficiency and menopause. Management and intervention. Further investigations, the follicle stimulating hormone should be repeated as it is possible that this could be a sporadic result or poorly timed sample and therefore confirmation is needed before continuing on to treatment. As there is such a poor prognosis for conception either naturally or with in vitro fertilization using the women's own ova, she should be counseled about assisted conception using donor eggs. Donated oocytes are fertilized with the partner's sperm and then implanted into the uterus. The woman needs appropriate luteal phase support, most commonly with progesterone pessaries. So for a fertilized uh, zygote to be attached in the uterus of this patient, the patient needs appropriate support, which is progesterone pessaries, since progesterone is known to relax the uterus and to support pregnancies. Restoring estrogen levels in women with primary ovarian insufficiency helps prevent some complications that occur as a result of low estrogen, such as osteoporosis. Some counseling issues that could be faced by the patient. Psychological, the women may feel that her ovaries are aging prematurely and this may have an effect on her self-esteem and sexuality. The stress associated with assisted conception is significant and many couples find that this in itself puts a large burden on the relationship. Funding, public funding may not be available as the woman already has one child. Consideration of alternative options, adoption, surrogacy and accepting childlessness should be explored with the couple. To solve these issues, a clinical pharmacists should counsel the patient. In psychological issues, uh, we should, we as a society should support women who are facing with infertility since it is not in their control and uh, it is not always treatable. And the patient should be suggested about alternative options such as adoption, surrogacy and accepting childlessness. With this, we will conclude today's session. Thank you for listening.
and if you like this video please try to share it thank you